So Cat Williams recently broke the internet after doing a wild interview with Shannon Sharp, where he took shots at some of the biggest people in comedy, including some of Joe Rogan's comic friends. The interview is almost three hours long and now has over 42 million views, and it's still climbing, which makes it compete with some of Joe Rogan's most watched episodes of all time in only one week, which is absolutely insane. And regardless of whether you like Cat Williams or not, I do think that he has earned his spot in comedy as one of the GOATs, and because of how much he knows about the business and how much work he has done, his comments definitely carry a lot of weight. And now he essentially gave some validation or credibility to something that a lot of us have thought in the past, which is that Joe Rogan has essentially created one of the biggest and most inflated comedy podcast bubble uh, out there with uh, his closest friends, also known as the Rogan Sphere. Now, keep in mind that Cal Williams did go easy on Joe Rogan, and it does make sense. I don't believe they have any personal beef uh, between each other, and it's mostly just natural competition. But it is interesting how just one comment from Cat Williams is making the entire Rogan sphere crumble. Because what's even more interesting is that we now have reactions or responses from comics like Brendan Schaub, Brian Callen, Theo Vaughn, and Andrew Schultz, which was pretty wild. So let's get started. Uh, comic View was everything. Um, comic View was really the break um, and not Friday after next, just because. Comic View was just 3,000 of your stand-up peers, and we just throw sets of all of them up there, and we see who the audience likes. Who do they like? And um, it was a great wild, wild west time to be involved in comedy, and um, the same is true for Def Jam, because uh, hip-hop was a fad at one time, and hip-hop ain't gonna last, and why are you doing that? Um, and that's how it was for blue comedy. Mm -hmm. um, if you were a comedian that cussed, you were ridiculed by the mainstream comedy mm -hmm. geist. That would be like me being on Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on there. I need to be on Shannon. Joe, Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. <laughs> 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 but that's really how it is. I'm so sorry I'm competitive. You're an athlete, right? You yeah, understand? yeah, I, I can tell. You understand. All the comedians have to come do these radio stations right. because you have to sell your tickets. And so that means you have to go to the radio station. Yes. I, I don't go to the radio station and I don't make posts to sell tickets. I just don't. So you've not seen me. I'm, I haven't, I'm not here in some subservient position nope. where somebody sent me over. Now, once again, I don't think that was a personal attack against Joe Rogan, but it was very, a, a very aggressive thing to say. But do keep in mind that Cal Williams did say that he was very competitive and it does make sense. I mean, they're both around the same age. They have a similar amount of comedy specials. And although, yeah, Rogan is not considered on the same level as Cat Williams when it comes to, you know, comedy or being funny. I do think Rogan definitely deserves some credit, you know, for everything that he has done. And he does have 10 comedy specials, which is just uh, two less than Cat Williams. But it would make sense that at some point, Cat Williams saw that Joe Rogan was giving a lot of interviews to his uh, close friends. Like the time that he went on the Flagan podcast, which got over 38 million views, or the time that he went on Theo's podcast and got over 18 million. And he probably wanted to do something similar, but compete with Joe Rogan and do it better. So because of that, instead of going to Joe Rogan's podcast and, and giving him that massive interview, he instead chose somebody that he probably liked a little bit more or felt more comfortable with. And plus, he knew that it was going to be a career-changing interview. Now, even though he did not mention who, the, who he thought the six comics were that uh, Rogan pushed without being funny, we can only speculate. But I think the first few are pretty easy to guess. If I had to guess, I mean, the first guess would be without a doubt Brennan Schaub, then probably Burt Kreischer, Brian Callen maybe, Tom Segura now. Uh, potentially Andrew Schultz, and then the, the other two could be either Ari Shafir or maybe Theo Vaughn. Obviously, all speculation, but, I mean, you let me know which ones you think he was probably thinking about. I'm hoping you guys watch the Cat Williams stuff. Yes. On the Shay Shay Club. Shay Sharp. Yeah, yeah. That podcast has 33 million views. Yeah, I watched it, like, a day ago. It was at 20. 33 million views. And Cat went bad on Rogan. He was saying how he just has on funny comedians on that he pushes. He'd never have me on. Wow. No, read the Rogan one. Joe Rogan. Joe don't want me on a show. Joe got six comedians that never been funny. He want to push out. Um, you, I'm funny. 
He's one of my favorite comics, and I'd love to have him on, Joe said. We, we, have, we talk about him all the time. If he's down, I'll make it happen. Yeah. People, people are DM me and go, he's talking about you. You've been on there more times than anyone. I went, I'm not on there for comedy relief. I'm there for my yeah. fight science. Yeah. There's no, but I'll tell you he's not I, talking about me. He's I talking saw about Cat the Williams at the comedy store a couple of times. He's a genius. Oh, Cat is a, here's the thing. He's, I want no heat. Hey, oh, Cat, I'm with you. No, no, no. I'm with dude, you, man. He's as good. Whoever's your enemy, he's my enemy. When he's on. Now, I haven't watched The Fighter and the Kid recently, but after watching that clip and hearing that come out of Brendan Schaub's mouth, it made me feel like if it was 2022 all over again. I mean, obviously, he didn't think it through because he's essentially coping by saying that he was never on Joe Rogan's podcast as comedy or as comic relief. And instead, he was there as a fight expert, which is just absolutely delusional. I mean, I'm not saying that he was ever funny on there, but I think we can all agree that he was always uh, promoting himself as a comic, you know, promoting tour dates and all that stuff. And also, you know, I think everybody would agree that Brendan Schaub is the person, the comic that everyone would say Joe Rogan pushed the most without being the funniest or even that funny at all. Now, to be fair, I find it very unlikely that Cat Williams was actually thinking about uh, Brendan Schaub and Brian Calling at that moment on that interview, but it definitely applies to them 100%. And I think by this point, every single Rogan's Fear comic has heard what Cat Williams said about Joe Rogan, but only Brendan and Callen has have actually said something publicly. I mean, it wasn't the best response, but they addressed it because Tom Segura could also say something about it, but he can't because I think he's still probably releasing content that he shot back in December. So I wouldn't be surprised if YMH releases a Christmas episode next week. However, when it comes to Andrew Schultz and Theo Vaughn, it was pretty insane because I was waiting all week to see what they both had to say about the situation, since you know they are uh, some of the biggest comics to come out of the Rogan sphere. And I was shocked to see that they just completely pretended that he didn't say that because they did talk about everything else uh, about Cat Williams, but just ignored that he said that uh, Rogan has always pushed the same six comics that have never been funny which is wild because they don't have to respond to cat williams in an aggressive way or call them out like that but the fact that they're not even addressing that comment it, it's pretty strange mm. but yeah so he just like goes at everyone phase on love p diddy martin lawrence uh not a single person sued him hmm. it's all facts <laughs> yeah, it's all facts. Until know, so, like, he went an earthquake. It's just like a lot of I don't know. A that lot is of the negativity. thing. It's like if you're a comedian, you can't sue when another comedian makes fun of you or says no. you got to come back with jokes. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's fascinating to see. I do think the person that handled the best was Joe. Yo, Joe killed it. He's like, we love you. We talk about you on the show all the time. I'd love to have you on the show. Yeah. Because Cat was like, yeah, he doesn't want me on his show. Mm -hmm. And he could have been defensive. Not defensive at all. He's like, I love you. I want to have you on the show. Yeah, come on. I mean, and that would be... He saw those numbers. Who I, <laughs> I mean, low key. I'm I sure think, he probably did beforehand, yeah, but like, after seeing that, who doesn't want Cat? But he's always sure spoken that. highly of, of Cat. Yeah, like, yeah. Let's check in with this dark oyster over here. Lemare, what do you think about uh, <laughs> what Cat said? What does the black community think? Uh, I think it, it's kind of like they kind of agree. Yeah, I think we're in agreement with Cat. It's yeah, definitely interesting to hear. Um, I love Cat Williams, dude. I saw Cat Williams, but that well, he was all in their business, which is frowned upon. Cat came in, in though. It's true, it I was agree. It was I agree. exciting. <laughs> and although Theo Vaughn also avoided the conversation and didn't address what Cat Williams said about Rogan, I don't think it's that bad since you know uh, Theo Vaughn isn't really into controversy like that. And when it comes to Shane Gillis. I definitely don't think that Cat Williams was referring to him as one of the unfunny comedians. However, when it comes to Andrew Schultz, him not talking about that whole thing was pretty insane. I mean, not bringing up crypto suit to Logan Paul back then, I guess is somewhat understandable, but this was unexpected because they didn't talk about it on Brilliant Idiots. They also danced around the subject. So I thought they were probably saving it for the Fligan podcast, but they didn't. They never brought it up and it makes you think, what is going on with the podcast? Because I understand not wanting to take shots at Cat Williams, but I would assume that the topic of uh, Joe Rogan pushing on funny comics would be a funny conversation. I mean, they could roast other people, other comics and stuff like that, but they actually pretended that it never happened and just ignored that comment because they talked about everything else 
except Cat Williams saying that Joe Rogan pushes the same six unfunny comedians, which is very interesting. And also, they're saying that Joe Rogan handled it the best way possible, but, I mean, he just really answered with the most corporate cookie-cutter response ever. But, I mean, at least Alex Media did call out the fact that, of course, Joe Rogan would want Cat Williams on the podcast now after seeing the insane numbers that the interview did. Now, even though there is a high chance that Andrew Schultz is one of the six comics that Cat Williams was talking about, to be fair to them, even in the current state that the podcast is in, which is pretty rough, I still think they have one of the best comedy podcasts at the moment. I mean, obviously, there are funnier shows going on, but in terms of how long they have been doing it and the fact that they have been consistent and they didn't go the Two Bears, One Cave route yet, I think that does deserve some credit. Do you believe you could tell the same jokes today as when you started out? I mean, Eddie Murphy not telling those jokes. Richard Pryor not being able, wouldn't be able to tell those jokes in 2024 that they told in the 70s and the 80s. You can never be woke enough. That's the problem. It keeps going. It keeps right. going further and further and further down the line. And if you get that to the point where you capitulate, where you agree to all these demands, it will eventually get to straight white men are not allowed to talk. Because so many people were imprisoned for so many years. I mean, I'm not joking. No, I, I know, I know. It really will get there. So they wouldn't have told them. But that's my point. They're not inferior people. No. If they were in this time, they would be going according to our time. Just like then, we were going according to that. Like, that's how it is in the world. There are words that we can use for a while. And we use them for a while until somebody says, that ain't a good word. Yeah. We should stop saying that. Correct. That don't make people feel good. And we stop saying the word and we move on to another word. You can't say the R word. You can certainly say special needs. Yeah. You can certainly say spectrum. He's slow. You can, you can, you can, there are things that you can say to get your point that don't have to hurt people. Right. But you would know that if what you did was construct the English language for a living, mm -hmm. then you would understand that part. Now, obviously, he wasn't talking about Joe Rogan or his friends directly. But the next few things that he says actually do apply to them very, very well. For example, for a while, both Joe Rogan and Brendan Schaub would push the idea that they were being shadow banned or that there was such a thing as censorship in comedy because of the things that they were saying. Now, I'm not saying that that doesn't happen, but clearly when it comes to Brendan Schaub, I don't believe that is the case. And what Cat Williams was essentially saying is that if you are a true comic, an actual writer, that then you will be immune to that type of stuff. And it does make sense. For example, recently we saw Matt Rife essentially getting mad that people were upset at one of his jokes. But keep in mind that it was his own audience and the joke wasn't really taken out of context. It was it was just a bad joke because comics like Louis C.K. have said worse things and, you know, they did it correctly. And once again, that's the difference between a comic like Louis C.K., Cat Williams and Dave Chappelle, who they can all write, act, and they're very, very talented when it comes to being creative and coming up with uh, original ideas. And then there are comics like Rogan, Burt Kreischer, Tom, and Andrew Schultz, who are still very, very funny people, and they're extremely talented, you know, when it comes to public speaking. But then when it comes to coming up with new ideas and putting it on paper, it's a whole different game. But I loved the craft, and that's why when I got into the craft, I thought it was my obligation to make sure that I kept writing new material so much that it forced these comedians to stop doing the set they've been doing for 10 years and keep writing some new stuff. And I knew that if I could get that to take on, that most of these bums would have to just quit comedy because they can't keep up. They're not going to keep writing an hour worth of material. Right. I've written an hour worth of material 19 times. They're not going to do it. Why? Because they're not creative writers. They want to get somebody else and have them write it and put it together. So it, it doesn't allow the regular comic the ability to grow is the real problem. Like the part of comedy is me taking these jokes in January and by March, I've begun to craft this joke. Okay. It's not as simple as it was when I wrote it. It was just da 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 da. But now it has the complexities of the fact that I'm having to deliver this to an East Coast audience, a down South audience, a Midwest audience, a Utah audience, a Colorado audience. And so it begins to take on a different complexion because you're having to deliver it to different people. Okay. And so 
this is what sharpens your joke. You then take those sharpened jokes that make us special. Not you just randomly take some. So it's a process. Now, hearing Cat Williams talk about how most comics are not creative writers is pretty interesting, especially since we recently covered uh, Tom Segura's 69-minute comedy special, which was pretty bad. And we mentioned how if that was truly his best effort at making a, at making a TV episode, then he really has no business talking down on um, comedy writers or late night TV shows or comedy shows like SNL. And also keep in mind that back then, a lot of comics like Andrew Schultz and even Tom Segura would talk about how comedy show writers were different and essentially how much they sucked compared to them who can actually perform in front of a stage, talk to people and keep their attention. I've noticed this with writers that they're so prolific on the page, but when they try to communicate it, it's a different art form almost. It's like the ideas are there, they just don't understand like how to hold attention the same way. Well, you know what it is? They're out of shape. Mm. It's like when, uh, yeah, I think it's a thing. It's like playing pickup basketball. The more stand-up I do, the yeah. looser I get on stage. Yeah. But it kind of shows that they care more about the marketing and fame instead of you know the art form. Because at some point, even Joe Rogan told Andrew Schultz to his face that the hardest part of the whole thing is writing which is also what cat williams said and it does make sense i mean if you have somebody that is really good at writing and coming up with with jokes you can definitely teach him how to perform in front of people but if you have somebody that, that's a performer i feel like it would be a lot harder to teach him how to be a good creative writer and i think it's cool that cat williams is making people have these conversations again because what happened in comedy for the past couple of years has been absolutely insane where people like burt kreischer who i don't know if he writes that much he had one of the biggest and most successful stand-up comedy tours last year. Now, obviously, good for Burt Kreischer. I think he deserves everything that he has. I mean, it's basic supply and demand. But the question is, should there be a different label for a comedian like Burt Kreischer? Or should it be the same, <laughs> the same word for a comic like Burt Kreischer and a comic like Louis C.K., Dave Chappelle, and Cat Williams? When you got into stand-up, was crossing over, was doing TV, was doing movie, was that a, was that a part of it? You're like, okay, I'm gonna do, I, I'm doing stand-up. Okay, next next the the next progression is TV movies. Throughout throughout the history of stand-up, sir. That's that's the goal for all of us. That's how it goes. That's why when you hear these dudes talking about, oh, I didn't want to be a movie star. You just know it's disingenuous. Like, what are you talking about, dude? But you could be a winner. You could be a winner on this day. It just, it's just work ethic. And not the work ethic they talk about. They tell you work ethic where they do all these movies. I'm the hardest working man. Well, no, everybody goes to work every day. Buddy. Right. I'm saying, I go to work all the time. Everybody who works goes to work every day. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. You get, what? You think I respect you more than my gardener? I don't. I don't. He work every day. Rain or shine. And also another thing that was heavily pushed by Joe Rogan was, you know, having an insane work ethic when it comes to podcasting and comedy, which is funny because I think that Brendan Schaub and Theo Vaughn are the perfect example of how that doesn't work in comedy. Keep in mind that Brendan Schaub at some point was the poster boy for, you know, the hardest worker in the room and it was working out for him. And Theo Vaughn, on the other hand, according to Brendan Schaub and other people, isn't the hardest worker. I mean, uh, Brendan Schaub would complain about Theo Vaughn having a bad attitude in the morning, missing episodes. So clearly when it comes to comedy, the hardest worker isn't necessarily the funniest person, especially with the Rogan's Fear comics who they all have at least two, two podcasts each. They uh, have side projects. They do stand up every single day and then they do other people's podcasts, which, you know, naturally makes you wonder when do they have time to live life and come up with, you know, material or jokes and also cat williams talking about how every comedian wants to be a movie star at some point was very interesting because i think that's true but it was something that joe rogan was really against for a while i mean he would tell people like brian cowling and other comics to not waste their time trying to be in, in hollywood where when they could just have their own podcast and do their own thing but it was very clear that a lot of comics wanted to be in hollywood and they just couldn't so they had the best excuse which was why would i want to waste my time in hollywood when i can make a lot of money doing things online great and we're good <laughs> We're good. See, this is the thing with you. You're like, Hollywood doesn't care. And I'm like, we don't care. Me and my friends don't care. None of us want to walk into a writer's room yeah. with people that couldn't make it as stand-ups and hear that our jokes aren't uh, funny enough. Art. If you're a comedian, yeah. 
going online and yes. building a fan base yes. it makes a hell of a lot more sense than playing this game here. Mm -hmm. As a comedian. You Suppose don't want to act or do, you just we don't all want do. to. We all do, but it's not possible. It's not possible. Now, Joe Rogan was the one who kind of gave me this advice. Mm -hmm. Now, I know you're saying, oh, he's not that successful. And that's... <laughs> I get it. Joe I Rogan, get it. here's what, but here's he's what we have to remember. He's not famous. He has no money. But here's what we got to remember about Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan was famous from network television first. But once again, I think it's very interesting how Cat William essentially doesn't agree with anything that Joe Rogan believes in, which I think would make for an interesting podcast between them. I don't know if that will ever happen, but when it comes to Joe Rogan's friends, the fact that they're not saying anything at all and they're just completely ignoring it. I think says a lot about them. Now, some people, including Brendan Schaub, were saying that Cat Williams was probably jealous and salty, and that's why he was calling people loud, also to get some clout and views. But I don't think that was the case. I mean, Cat Williams is a wild person and has gotten a, in a lot of uh, trouble in the past, like legal trouble. But everything that he said sounded reasonable it wasn't like he just went on there and said the most insane wild things just to get people talking but i could see how cat williams is not the easiest person to work with and because of that you know he's not at the, at the at the same level as somebody like kevin hart because in terms of business i would assume kevin hart is extremely reliable and even though he's almost worth half a billion dollars according to the internet he still shows up to all the media and does all the morning shows and all that stuff but yeah overall i thought it was a great interview and and i'm glad that uh shannon sharp allowed cat williams to say whatever he wanted to say because i do think that it sparked some healthy conversations around comedy and stuff like that and it's I mean, at the end of the day, it's entertainment. But yeah, what do you think? Should comics take shots at each other publicly or should they fix things in private? Because they kind of uh, they, they kind of started doing that last year. Com some comedy podcasts were, you know, taking shots at Brennan Schaub and all that stuff, but nothing like what Cat Williams did. But let me know what you think in the comments below. Leave a like and subscribe to support the channel. Dislike if you didn't like the video, but that is all we have for today. See ya.